on the world and with Anne and Nancy Wilson from Heart. They're in the studio with us today. And I suppose the place to begin is really at the beginning, back home with your family. They're they're musically inclined too, aren't they? Yeah. Our our mother always played the the uh, piano, you know, and um, our father barbershop quartet. Yeah, was <laughs> a was a Sunday a Sunday afternoon baritone, you know. And uh, <laughs> our other sister, we have a third sister who's uh, the oldest. I'm the middle, and Nancy's the youngest, and she sings too. She has a beautiful, more you know, classical type mm -hmm. voice. Yeah, she's already helped us with some backup vocals for the next album. Yeah, yeah. which will be fun. Yeah. Um, <coughs> since I was about 13 and Nance was eight, which would have been 1962, 63. <laughs> yeah, I was playing ukulele and. Piano. Well, that's when you started playing guitar, and you had that little three-quarter yeah. size Stella. Right, L little plywood guitar. With I think I was like really ten. terrible action stuff. Ten when I really started playing. Yeah. Well, the guitar was almost as big as she was yeah. <laughs> at that point. <coughs> it was like, hey, was little Nancy, you know, get your guitar and play us a little tune. Well, it was weird enough that it was a child with a guitar, <coughs> and let alone a, a girl child with a guitar. Yeah. It was. Uh, Our parents used to think neat. it was a joke, though, and they used to say, "Sing that song about the prevert." <laughs> <laughs> There's oh, a Peter Paul and that Mary song. That was a song called "The Talking Candy Bar Blues" yeah. by uh, Peter Paul and Mary, which was on the <coughs> album 1700 or what? Right. Yeah, I think that's what that was called. And really strange. I learned it on guitar because I thought it was really funny, and I didn't know what the word "prevert" meant when I played it, and, <laughs> it, and they didn't tell me for a long time. They just made a joke. It was just cute to hear this little. They didn't discourage thing. me from doing it, you know, because of the word. <laughs> Which was nice. In fifth grade, I, I played the trumpet because, uh, like, I was too young, really, to know that a girl's supposed to do some things and not supposed to do some other things. Was there some reason you took so, up the trumpet? Well, yeah, because I just liked it, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> like, back then, you know, people had really strong ideas that women should do some things and should not do some others. And playing the trumpet <laughs> is not under the, the heading of things that women should do. <laughs> Same with playing or the it guitar. It wasn't back then. So I was talked out of it, sort of. But you also had <laughs> braces at the time, yeah, which didn't which work didn't too well with well. playing the trumpet either. Yeah, I was in fifth grade. I had so braces. So that was part of the reason <laughs> she was talked out of it. So you, you played uh, folk circuit around the, the Northwest, and then you moved to Vancouver. Yeah, to well, uh, never really a folk circuit, you know. Like, we just played churches and, and schools, rallies, and you know stuff like that yeah. in our <laughs> in our folk days. Not for any money, really. Lots or, of know, living ten rooms. bucks here, or something like that. And then Vancouver is yeah. really where Heart came together yeah. as it is now. How, yeah. did, how did you come about with, with, with the name and with the, the other guys? Well, um, actually, Nance and I didn't form Heart. You know, we just joined it after it, would, after it had been going for a while. Heart is an old, old name in Seattle, you know. <coughs> it's been around since maybe the um, 67 or 8. And that's long before I had anything to do with it or... Nance did. It was, it, it started with uh, Roger Fisher and Steve Fossen, who lived up in the Bothell area. Uh -huh. And Mike Fisher. Yeah, and Mike Fisher, Roger's brother. Who managed them and everything? Yes. Uh, first, the Army. And since it was the late 60s and the idea of the Army wasn't that popular back then, <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> these Didn't trends come and go. They changed it to Whiteheart. Um, it was named after this science fiction <coughs> novel called Tales of the White Heart, and then they just dropped the white because they, d they didn't dig the white so much. Heart. About 1969, the true origin I of think, the word was actually born. Of the name. Old, old Seattle band. Yeah. But um, I joined Steve and Raj. I was in East Side bands, and I, you know, nobody of any, you know, note or anything. I met Steve and Raj in about 1970. We put a, a, a group together called Hocus Pocus um, with some other, you know, Seattle area people. At that point, I met Mike Fisher, and we really hit it off. Yeah. So I went up to Canada to be with him and, you know, left Hocus Pocus. And Steve and Raj decided it was, I mean, we had such a neat thing with three of us that they came up to Canada. So the four of us, including Mike Fisher, formed Heart up there. Hocus Pocus. So, like, for me, it was like I'd been in all these, these East Side bands, 
and I'd heard about Hart over here because they were getting some considerable success on a local level as Hart. Mm. And I thought, wow, Hart, big time, you know, over in Seattle, playing all those big clubs. And then gradually, all of a sudden, I just found myself in Hart. And it was, it was pretty neat for a country girl from Bellevue. That's kind of where I jumped in, you know. I just jumped in right at the club level, like the top, the upper club, club level, you know. Yeah. People probably would say, oh, yes, look at this. She didn't pay any dues. <laughs> oh, she paid her dues. She did. She paid her dues. <laughs> but um, we've all paid our dues. But then right after Nancy joined, um, not too long after that, as a matter of fact, we met the Mushroom people, you know, signed with Mushroom Records. And, uh, <laughs> And had the cone heads from Mushroom Records. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just God. only a joke. <laughs> Harmless joke. Harmless joke. Ha ha. He he ho. Anyway, we signed with Mushroom Records and made Dreamboat Annie. And all of a sudden, Nancy found herself in the middle of a lot more than she bargained for. <laughs> As you can probably tell, Anne and Nancy Wilson are just getting warmed up, so in just a moment we'll have more About Heart from Heart as Rock Around the World continues. We're back now with Anne and Nancy, changing the subject just a little bit, talking about the people who have influenced Heart's music. With a lot of bands, it's real easy. You can just kind of listen and you know pick out the people who probably influenced them. But with you girls, I was kind of surprised to hear about people like Paul Simon. Who else? Peter and Paul of Peter Paul. And yeah. And... A little bit later was the Beatles and Donovan and Moody Blues. Moody Blues and neither of us took lessons. Well, didn't lessons. you take lessons from Al Turay? I tried to for about two months and didn't have time to keep it up because we had to go on tour. Once you already have knowledge, it's it's always valuable, you know, to, to add to it <laughs> with more precision, technical. You know, which I'm, I've am i never been that really good at. <laughs> yeah, and also I think uh, really <coughs> really most real musicians are always looking for a guru, you know. So you yeah you look for this teacher that, that you think can really, <laughs> you can really follow and you can really, really learn something from. It's a love song, you know. It's a very positive, uh, just knockout love song about this girl that, that falls in love with this incredible guy with blue eyes. And, uh, the magic part comes in when you think about how you feel if, if you've ever fallen in love with somebody, you know, how do you feel when you first start realizing it? You feel like you've got a spell on you. You don't feel normal. <laughs> it feels downright unreal. Now the quest for a guru, that magic man, if you will, can really go on forever. So, in lieu of the guru, Hart found another way. Touring is a pretty good teacher because you play really often. And so you get to play yeah. every day. It's so good <clears throat> to keep in practice. But it's also s sort of stagnating, too. Yeah. Because you don't feel like yeah. just playing, you know, for yourself because you've already played that day, mm -hmm. you know. Sometimes it gets easy to be lazy on the road as far as being creative, you know, with yourself and just playing and growing. Growing, you're spending. <laughs> <laughs> crazy place, the whole thing is crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's all true. Yeah. Um, the road is a pretty crazy place. And uh, there's some real high points and some real low points. We're spending our 60 minutes this week with Anne and Nancy Wilson learning more about heart. So stay by your radio. There's a lot more from Rock Around the World. My guests this week, Anne and Nancy Wilson from Heart. You know, one of the great things about the girls is that they keep in close touch with their parents and they listen to the tunes and their reaction is really important to them. But at the beginning, there were some raised eyebrows. Well, I think that at first they, they felt not, um, not angry or anything about us going into rock, but I think they felt kind of frightened just because of fear of the unknown. And... Uh, you know, like you're you're scared of anything you don't know or understand. But they have watched, you know, and they've seen that we're still okay and we're still alive and we're doing fine. We're learning a lot, you know, and growing up quick and all that, but <laughs> doing okay. So they're they're really into it now. Our dad is just so proud. He's really proud. He's a 
junior high school teacher, and so his kids are right at the age where they're into heart, you know, and so they always say, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Wilson, what's the news? What are they playing here in Seattle? And they always ask him about the new songs and when the albums are coming out. He gives them questionnaires to fill out, like when both the albums came out. He gave them all questionnaires and they got to rate all the songs. Yeah. So, and see, he was getting them to write, you know, yeah. as, as an assignment, but they got to write about something that they were into, rock and roll. As the old saying goes, you ain't heard nothing yet. Stay tuned for more from Ann and Nancy Wilson of Heart as Rock Around the World continues. Don't go away. We're back now with more Rock Around the World. My guests, the Wilson Sisters from Heart. Really, for any band, when it gets right down to it, what's all important is the material, the songs. And Anne and Nancy and company have their own particular way of approaching the tunes. Mostly Anne writes the words, and mostly I do the guitar parts, the structure of the song. Yeah. Like how it went on most of the songs that we wrote it's as a three instrumental is that, is that Nancy and I pretty much got the song, like the, the words and the melodies and the chord structure, and then Roger really contributed a lot of ideas about feel and... Um, and guitar Yeah, parts. guitar licks and, and stuff like that, that really gave it its final character. Yeah. So, again, in the conceptualizing end of it, it was mainly Nance and I. Scott. A girlfriend and I used to play blues harp together in high school and we just we'd go into the girls can you know, where, <laughs> where there was the heavy scene and smoke cigarettes and play the blues <laughs> harp <laughs> really and be real down about having to be in school and, yeah. and you know we were really the blues <laughs> we had to sing the blues yeah. and it was <laughs> it was pretty funny. Chuck Marshall here inviting you to stay tuned because when Rock Around the World continues, we'll have a final comment from Anne and Nancy Wilson of Heart. Put your ears on hold for a commercial announcement on behalf of Jay Ferguson. I remember the nights in the cool sand. We're back now on Rock Around the World, and there you have it, two LPs from Heart. Dreamboat Annie and Little Queen, and now Anne and Nancy Wilson wrap up their feelings both about Little Queen and themselves. We feel that our group is at its best live. We, we spent almost all of last year playing live concerts, and so that's our most natural um, media right yeah. now. We so recorded we, most of the album. Yeah, so we live. tried to get the album as live as possible, and there's a lot of <coughs> the basics that were done live. We tried to get the feel, you know, this real electric live feel, more than, than technical um, perfection. perfection. And we, I think we got some sparks happening. Heart on Rock Around the World was produced by Eddie Kritzer, executive producer Danny Lippman, production in Hollywood by Tree. As always, we welcome your questions and comments, both about the Rock Around the World radio show and the Rock Around the World magazine. You can drop us a line here in Hollywood, California. The zip code is 90028. Next week, we'll spend 60 minutes with Billy Joel, and coming up soon, a special Rock Around the World presentation of the Hendrix Conversations, produced by the Jimi Hendrix Foundation. For Rock Around the World, I'm Chuck Marshall.